Let me just say a word to you. If even right now you are experiencing panicky feelings, that experience is one in which you well know, you're probably familiar with those feelings. This is probably not the first time. It's perhaps a very familiar enemy, as it were, arising from within your very own heart, which is the most distressing kind of enemy of all. And if I had to say one thing, it's that however alone, isolated, that experience of fear feels, that the reality that actually wraps around us is that you are not alone, that there is someone who is described as, a, as who describes himself in words that say, I will never, never leave you or forsake you. Never, never, never. You are not alone. And it's not as though just hearing that said is some kind of magic answer. Uh, it's one of those things that sometimes gets worked into our hearts more effectively during a moment when we're not feeling anxious or panicky. But it is the reality on which you can build your life. We, we live in a world that when you really think about it, we have many, many good reasons to feel fearful. We are, in fact, incredibly vulnerable and fragile beings. Um, there is a, a passage in Romans 8 that doesn't tend to get a lot of the, the airplay it deserves, but where Paul says, the Spirit, and the Spirit is the one who mediates the presence of God to us, the one in whom we are not alone, says the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And it's really interesting that it doesn't say our weakness says as if there were a list, like 10 things that I'm weak, I have 10 weaknesses or 20 or five or, it says our weakness. And weakness is a fundamental aspect of our humanity that our culture doesn't like to tell us that. And often we as Christians don't even like to admit that most fundamental of all realities. But by creation, we are weak. We are like little children, infants, who are utterly dependent on the care of somebody else. And our sin, in which we run from that weakness, that essential dependency, makes us even more weak in a different sense. We are, we are weak and in need of mercy because of our sinfulness. And we are in need of mercy because the God who, on whom we depend he must come through for us or we die. And there's this fundamental reality that in our weakness, he promises that he will not leave us. And the passage that in the talk that I spoke about a minute ago, the passage that had most deeply spoken to the young man who had come so far in dealing constructively with his feelings of panic was Psalm 121. And Psalm 121 is a, a psalm, it's short, but at every turn it actually acknowledges our vulnerability. It talks about the things that can threaten us by day and by night. And even that opening line, I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? I think what it is actually saying, Jerusalem is actually a little knob of a hill that's in a bowl between high, higher hills, higher mountains. And everywhere you look in Jerusalem, you're looking up. And an enemy could come over any one of those hills. And the, it's actually a picture of in a place where I don't know from which direction the threat could come and it, during day or by night or when I go out or when I come in now or in the future, there is one who keeps me. There is one who is a shepherd who walks with me. There's one who will not abandon me. There's one who, and in the, in the wonderful metaphor of another shepherdly keeping Psalm, Psalm 23, it says, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And it's actually a picture of the way that the shepherd who's taking care of sheep stands behind the sheep, you might say to the side and in the back, so he can actually keep an eye on those that he cares for. So the, shepherd, the shepherd's goodness and mercy are actually following the sheep 
is the way that he leads them into paths of life. And it is such a picture that someone who has his eye on you and cares for you and will not leave you and has good purposes for you. And as you again think of the way in which well, Psalm 23 and Psalm 121 kind of play off each other and develop different things, I love it in the last line of Psalm 23 when it says that after saying that goodness and mercy follow me, it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I don't really like the word house in that. House seems like a building. And what it's talking about is that the shepherd is taking us home. He's taking us to where he lives. And the whole Psalm of 23 and then the implication of Psalm 121 is, you know, we're on this journey and we're going somewhere and there's someone who's caring for us. And in the end of the journey, we come home and we're there forever.